Comrade, before training to the Kelp Bell, you got to be able to pick one up safely. So here's the Kelp Bell deadline. Yo, Tim, talk to me. You want me to make a video about how to upgrade an iMac, huh? Uh, well... Hold on. John, make it fast. I got Timbo on the other line. Yeah, well, at least I didn't call him Tim Apple. We appreciate it very much, Tim Apple. Yep, he already asked me to make a video. Ah, just lost Tim. Hey, I know you left to play Chancellor and all, but tell those knuckleheads in design to get going on that chassis redesign we spoke about. Click. Hello everyone. Today we are upgrading my kids 2011, 21 and a half inch iMac. This was the first Mac I ever purchased and it randomly happened to be on the day Steve Jobs died. Before I bought this Mac, I was strictly PC. My computers only seemed to last about five years before they either failed or became obsolete. Owning this Mac over the last nine years has been a refreshing change. Luke Miani recently uploaded a great video about how these old Macs still make great computers. I'll put it in the description below if you're interested in checking it out. Today we are going to replace the hard drive with a solid state drive. SSDs are way faster and more reliable because they don't have any moving parts. The new SSD cost $160 in a kit that comes with everything we need to perform the install. Earlier in the year, I maxed out the memory at 16 gigabytes, which cost $76. The cards were very easy to install, but did not give me the performance I was hoping for. Although we will be going through our steps for this upgrade, I recommend you also watch the instructional videos on the site that I purchased the hardware from and we'll include that in the description below. The first thing you're going to want to do is back up all of the data on your hard drive. It's definitely the most important thing on your computer and you want to save all those pictures, videos, documents, everything. Next, you're going to want to power down your machine. Apple recommends leaving it unplugged for 25 minutes to make sure that all of the capacitors inside the computer are fully discharged. Done. While the capacitors are discharging, you can use this time to clean your workspace. You're gonna want a really clean workspace um, to do this project, so make sure you wipe down all dust uh, on the desk and the computers and just clear off any junk that might be in the way. One important thing I forgot to mention is to log out of your Apple ID. I upgraded my 2013 iMac and didn't log out of my Apple ID and it created a lot of problems. Also, don't wipe your hard drive. Just in case you need to reinstall it, uh, everything will be there and you can do that without any problems. With your workspace clear and clean, you can set out all of your tools, wash your hands, and discharge any static electricity that might be on your body by touching something metal. You're going to want to put this someplace safe and dust free. There are a bunch of screws holding the screen on and you're going to want to be careful taking them off because you don't want to touch the actual screen itself. Just so I don't get any uh, dust in the camera, I'm going to put a piece of painter's tape over it. I've got the computer open, I'm going to clean out all the dust that's inside. Um, it's pretty heavily built up around both of the fans and um, that's horrible. 
for the computer. Uh, if you can't get the proper airflow, the components inside overheat and then ultimately something fails. So we'll be doing that. And also this battery right here, BR2032. Um, it's almost 10 years old. So it's gotta be at, uh, at least close to the end of its life cycle. We'll be replacing that as well. Yeah. Alright everybody, this is my favorite part of the video because I get to discuss my mistakes and um, hopefully offer some advice that will help you have a better experience than I did. I've got five takeaways for you and we're going to start with number one. Be prepared to replace the coin battery on the motherboard. I wanted to be sure what battery was in there before buying a replacement and figured that I could just pick it up anywhere. Wrong. My wife went to a couple of places and didn't have any luck finding one. I ended up having to button up the computer and hope for the best. If I had any issues in the future, I figured I would just have to open it up again. When buying your replacement, be sure to buy the BR2032 and not the CR2032. Um, from what I've read, it can cause problems if you put the CR coin battery in there and uh, there's obviously a reason Apple put the BR coin battery in there and that's the one you should go with. Number two, have multiple ways ready to bring your computer back to life. Using the recovery option was not working out for me. I kept getting the message can't download additional components needed to install Mac OS X. I tried multiple workarounds I found on YouTube from setting the clock back to creating a bootable USB drive. In the end, the only thing that worked for me was using a time machine backup. The problem with that was I didn't have this kind of backup going into this project because I literally had nothing I needed to save on the computer and wanted a brand new fresh install of Mac OS. I ended up reinstalling the old hard drive, creating a time machine backup, then reinstalling the SSD and bringing the computer back up with that time machine backup. The good news with having to open up the computer again is I was prepared to replace that coin battery this time. Number three, lay down your computer when doing this project. The instructional video on the OWC website shows um, the guy working on the computer with it standing up, but this time I laid the computer down on a microfiber cloth and it was way easier opening it up and working on it. So I would highly suggest doing that. Number four, clean your machine. I already went over this in the video, but I just wanted to re-emphasize how important it is for everything in there to be as dust-free as possible. 
with dust built up around the fans, they can't move the same amount of air that they were designed to throughout the computer to cool the components inside there. And with dust built up on those actual components, they can't get the proper heat transfer they need as well. So what happens is they end up overheating and failing prematurely. Things that are out of sight are often out of mind, um, but now it feels good knowing that the inside of my computer is clean. Number five, buy the correct hardware to install and mount your new drive. I've seen people on YouTube tape their SSD to the back of the chassis, and that is not only hokey, but it will not let the SSD get the proper airflow it needs on both sides. When an SSD is reading or writing information, it gets hot. It needs the airflow on both sides, and uh, that bracket allows that to happen. The kit that comes uh, on the OWC website also comes with the temperature sensor cable that controls the fan speed, and that's super important because I think if you don't install that on these older Macs, then the fan will run at full speed, and you would need to download some third-party hack to control that, and you don't want to end up doing that. All right, everybody, that's all I got for you. As always, take your time with it and have fun. Bye-bye, everybody.